My name's Tegan. My pronouns are they, them. My name's Sarah. My pronouns are she, her. My name's Kate. And my pronouns are they, them. Okay. So, I was going to start by asking some questions. And, you know, it's kind of like an interview, I guess, for the most part. But So, what does it mean to be a part of the LGBTQ community? Um, so, to me, to be part of the LGBTQ community, or I think, as many people call it, the queer community, um, I think, to me has to a lot to do with my personal expression and the people that I surround myself with and my own personal community as well as the wider community of queer people in St. Louis but also beyond um, you know in the wider country and the world as well um, right. and I think also queer my queer community definitely comes a lot through the internet as well definitely um I would say, yeah, I mean, being part of the queer community is like as simple as just like living your life and being true to yourself and I feel like having empathy and listening and trying to let, like every day I feel like for me, I'm like always trying to grow and learn and respect other people and just enjoying my friendships. I don't know. It's, um, it's. So for me, I feel like my queer community is equal parts expression as it is about building community and support. Um, so while I might find a lot of purpose through the art I want to create or the ideas I want to share, it's also equally important to build connections and bridges to other people in the community who might need my support more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where are we right now? So this is a coffee shop called Mocha Bees, and Mocha Bees has always been a hub for queer activism and a hub for all sorts of types of activism. Um, it's been a place where people can come and get involved in the community, a place where people can come and get educated. They have all sorts of books um, available for people to educate themselves on all sorts of different uh, marginalized communities, and it's a place where queer people generally feel very very comfortable here very welcomed and um, it's a big part of the culture of this specific coffee shop how was the coming out experience so I think that the coming out experience is different for every single person and I think that there are some people that really have a strong connection to that experience and other people who feel like maybe they never really needed to come out because they've always been out in some sort of way. And so from my personal experience, I've never had a single moment that was my coming out. It was really just me accepting myself for who I truly am. And it was more of a personal experience rather than a public experience. Um, and it's uh, just been something, uh, I've had a interesting relationship with that process. So I feel like for me, I kind of had it come out twice. Um, you know, sexuality and gender was a double experience for me. I didn't really understand varying gender or what the gender spectrum really was, but I understood that like I didn't feel feminine and when I tried to live femininely, it felt like I was forcing myself to be what was expected of me rather than like what I actually felt was inside of me. Which was a lot more challenging to understand because growing up the time that it did, that wasn't talked about in a way that like sexuality was. And for me, I had a much deeper and quicker understanding of like being attracted to people of any gender identity. So that was kind of like my focus at first. When I was a young person, I came out as a pansexual person when I was 17 or 18, kind of quietly, but still like out. But gender was a deeper experience for me because it caused me a lot of grief and shame to live the way that I was ex I felt I was expected to live rather than like who I knew myself to be and it wasn't until I had like the language given to me when I met non-binary people that I understood that that's who I was that's the world that I lived in 
Something that is important to know is the differences in the queer community with people's identities, um, whether that be their sexual identity or their gender identity. And I think that a lot of people maybe just don't realize that there really is differences between those things and those differences should be respected. And so, um, you know, myself personally, I identify as a non-binary person, um, which is under the transgender spectrum. and that is my gender identity versus, you know, that's who I am versus who I like, which I would consider myself as a pansexual individual where I'm attracted to people regardless of their gender identity. Um, so definitely important to note that those things are different and um, they may be, um, you know, there might be different combinations of those things in every different individual. Can you tell me why pronouns are important in LGBT community? Pronouns are very important because it has to do a lot with the cross-cultural communication that happens within the queer community, but also the communication that happens with other people outside of the queer community. So a form of that communication is to respect the pronouns that people use and to realize that pronouns don't necessarily have to tie into somebody's how they look. Um, as a feminine presenting person, I still use they them pronouns and those will be my pronouns um, until, you know, at, at some point if I decide to change them. It's important because it's a really great and good moment to give someone the opportunity to be identified who, for who they are. I think as trans people, we have a really difficult journey because we're often finding ourselves born in a body that's not comfortable for us. So then we make this tradition transition and we want to be seen for who we are, those words are ways to offer us comfort and support and validation. Um, I think it's really important to try to like get rid of assumptions. Like You should never assume someone's pronouns. And we have to teach ourselves the habit of asking someone what their pronouns are. And my best advice for that is to never ask someone their preferred pronouns because pronouns aren't a preference, they just are what they are. So it's just always important to like remember that if you don't know someone's pronouns, it's always okay to ask what are your pronouns, like what, what are your pronouns, and then um, also if you don't know someone's pronouns, to refer to them as they, and then have a dialogue with them, but you don't like assume male or female pronouns. Right. Um, yeah, just be kind and people will be kind to you back. It's all about just conveying that you mean well and that you have respect. To me, what intersectionality is? So, intersectionality is the idea that as a person, you don't just have like one identity, you have multiple aspects of your identity that affect your privilege and affect your marginalization in a culture. And you're not just ever one thing, like you're not just gay, but you're also gay for me white, cisgender, um, middle class, and so it's important to note that when you're talking to people to not trivialize certain aspects of their identity and also like especially in feminism and in general to like when you are fighting for justice to not just fight for the privileges or aspects of only your identity, but be fighting for people of color, fighting for class differences, cla fighting for gender and sexuality differences. And so it's like an important idea to keep in mind that as human beings, we have multiple facets of us and multiple different ways we can be privileged or disadvantaged at the same time. So there's a word in the queer community and the word is jush and it's spelled j-u-s-h and this is kind of a communication thing between queer people within the queer community um, because it's a word that originated from a famous drag queen named jasmine masters who is a very famous internet drag queen and also a famous drag queen who appeared on rupaul's drag race um, which is a reality tv show and um, this word jush essentially is a word that can be used for anything. It can be used as a verb, a noun, an adjective. You know, you can say something like, hey jush, and that's saying, you know, like, hey buddy, or hey girl, or something like that. Um, you can say like, oh, look at that jush over there. And um, it can really just fill in as any type of word. And so that's kind of a fun, interesting part of the queer community is that we have these little things where 
um, these, these words and these phrases and these sayings that are passed around, that are known within the queer community and somebody who maybe wasn't within the queer community wouldn't understand that word that we all use very regularly and is a really fun word and comes from like a really positive, fun place um, from this, this very famous and very fun and very funny drag queen. Okay, Jish. Hey, Jish. Like, Jish. Hey, you're gonna finish that Jish over there? Sure am. Oh, this Jish is good. Ooh, that Jish looks real good, Jish. Don't bring Jishes. Sarah with her Jishes. <laughs> what advice do you want to give? Um, my advice would be to stop the, like, primitive desire to box people into little small narrow boxes when everything is kind of more of like a spectrum like your gender identity your sexual orientation all of those things are fluid and can change at any point in time and that's completely normal and natural um, I definitely growing up like thought I was definitely much more asexual and now I'm attracted to everybody so <laughs> um, but yeah, I think people need to move beyond like boxes in terms of putting people in because that's just not how humans are. Another thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of like putting people in boxes as a bisexual person, I experience this all the time from the queer community and the non-queer community of like erasure as a bisexual person. Like either people want to make me make me out to be completely gay or straight. And that's not who bisexual people are. Um, and you can have preferences that don't equal 50-50, and all of that's completely valid. So. My advice to give would be to say that there needs to be a lot of communication between the queer community and between other marginalized communities and between just everyone. Um, I think that the more communication there is from within and outside these communities, the more we understand each other and the better off we all are at respecting each other. And, um, you know, it's very true to say that the queer community definitely needs these other communities to thrive and to survive. And the more that we intersectionally communicate, the better that we all end up being at the end of the day. The advice I'd like to give is, at the end of the day, like, you know who you are, you don't owe that to anyone. If you're not ready to come out, don't come out. Do it on your terms, and when you do come out, people might understand you, but I hope that you can find a lot of peace in, like, knowing who you are. Like, I've had my own struggles with that as well, and i found a lot of strength that when I lay my head down at night, I know who I am, and I don't owe that to anyone else.